Good morning, fifth graders. Today we are on page 99 of your student journal, and our objective for the day is today I will interpret and write numerical expressions. Okay, so let's talk about what that means. So today I will interpret. Interpret means just make sense of. So today we will make sense of and write numerical. Numerical just means there's numbers involved, expressions. So yesterday we learned an expression just looks like a mathematical kind of equation or problem without the equal sign. So pretty much today we're going to be making sense of and writing mathematical equations, but they don't have equal signs. Okay, so let's look at our vocabulary today and we see again what that expression means. So numbers, symbols, and operations grouped together with no equal sign. So that's the difference between an expression and an equation. Then they give us some examples. So these are more complicated examples than yesterday. I think I gave you an easy expression such as two plus one. So these ones are much more complex than we've seen. And then they remind us what a parenthesis is. It's a pair of symbols grouping the part of an expression or equation that is to be evaluated first. So remember yesterday we did that PEMDAS for order of operations, and PEMDAS is P stands for parentheses, which always comes first. Okay, today we're going to be seeing not only operations, but we're gonna see words that represent operations. So here's some things that we need to keep in mind. Sum means solution to an addition problem. So whenever you see sum, you know it's addition. Product is the solution to a multiplication problem. Quotient is the solution to a division problem. And divi difference is the solution to a subtraction problem. So this is here if you need to go back and refer back to this, but that might be helpful. Okay, we are going to be looking at the steps they give us, but we're going to be making a couple adjustments. So yes, step one, read the sentence. Definitely, you're going to need to read the sentence. Okay, step two, it says, underline the math operation words. We're gonna cross this off, and we're gonna say underline the two parts. And when I do my examples, you'll see what I mean, the two parts. So there's gonna be two parts to these, and we're gonna underline them. Okay, then for step three, we're gonna cross all this off. We're gonna leave the word circle, okay? And I'm gonna actually cross this off and this, and we're gonna finish step three down here. So we're gonna say circle what needs to happen first. Circle what needs to happen first. Okay, and then when we do our expression, how do we make it clear we want it to happen first? Parentheses. Parentheses are going to tell the problem solver or tell whoever would be doing the problem what we need to happen first. Okay, so pretty much our steps are just two. It says, we have obviously three actually. Read the sentence, underline the two separate parts, and then circle what needs to happen first. Okay, so I'm gonna get started and show you mine. Okay, here is my first problem. You can set down your pencil and just watch for a moment. My first problem says, and I'm gonna do step one, which is read it, add five and six, then multiply by two. Okay, so step two says look for those two parts. What are those two parts? Here, it's nice because they kind of separated them for me with this semicolon, but my two parts are add five and six, then multiply by two. Those are the two different sets of directions they're giving me. Okay, 
My next step says, circle what they want me to do first. So what do they want me to do first in this problem? Well, I have. am I gonna add five and six or am I gonna multiply by two? Well, there's a few things here that tell me what I need to do first. I know I'm adding five and six first. And the reason I know this is one, the word then tells me that this is going to come after. So I know that this is going to come after. Um, I also know it says multiply by two. There's nothing else to multiply it by two, by two. So I know I can't do this part first. This is going to happen first. And it's not because it's written first in the sentence. Don't get confused by that, ladies and gentlemen, because sometimes we'll see it in a different area. But what they want me to do is add five and six, then multiply by two. Okay, so I need to write this as an expression. So I'm gonna write five, add five and six, and then multiply by two. Now, if I leave it like this, ladies and gentlemen, and someone goes to solve it using PEMDAS, if someone comes to solve this using PEMDAS, they're not gonna see parentheses, they're not gonna see exponents, and they are gonna see multiplication and division. So they're going to do this part first, but that's not what I want them to do first. I want them to add five and six first. So the way that I'm gonna to communicate to them or tell them I need them to do this first is I'm going to put this in parentheses. Because now, when they follow PEMDAS, they'll do this part first, and this is what we want done first. So it's really important that you use parentheses to communicate what you want solved first. Okay, let's look at my second one. It says subtract four from the sum of eight and three. Okay, this one's a little trickier because they didn't divide it for me using a semicolon. So I need to find the two parts. I see subtract four and then the sum of eight and three. Okay. So which one do I need to do first? Well, it sounds like they want me to take four away from this, which means I need to do this part first. I need to do sum of eight and three first. And remember, sum means add or addition. So this is what I need to happen first, sum of eight and three. Okay, so eight plus three, and then they want me to subtract four from this. Okay, so now if I leave this just like this and someone comes to solve it using PEMDAS, they're gonna see no parentheses, no exponents, no multiplication or division, and there is addition or subtraction, and they're gonna go left to right. So when they go to solve this, they're actually going to solve this first. So I don't need the parentheses here because when they go to solve it, they're gonna do this first anyways. If I added the parentheses, it might be more clear that I want them to do this first, but this would be a correct answer as well. I like this one better because again, I think it's more clear to the solver that this needs to happen first, but this would be a correct answer as well. Okay, let's look at my next one. Write a sentence for the following expression. Okay, so this time they gave me the expression and they want me to write the sentence. Okay, so they clearly want me to do this first. So what are a few things I could use? For this, I could say divide. I could say use find the quotient. Okay, but I, I can say divide 12 by three then add five, that would work. So that tells someone clearly that I want them to do this first, then add five. I also could have maybe said, um, add five to the quotient, because quotient tells me it's division, of 12 and three. So this one is maybe a little bit more complex and I want you to add five to the quotient of this, which means I need you to do this first and then add five to it. So those are two different ways that I could have written that. 
Okay, boys and girls, or ladies and gentlemen, since you're my older friends, um, let's try some of these together. We're on page 100, and I'm gonna grab my green pen if you wanna pick up your pencil. Here's our first one. So let's read it first. Double six, then subtract three. Okay, so we're gonna, what are our two parts? We have double six, then subtract three. Okay, what do we need to do first here? We wanna circle what has to happen. And hopefully we see it's gonna be that because then tells me this is after. So this is what I want to happen first. So we're gonna double six first. Double six, when you say double something, it usually means you're gonna multiply by two. You could also use repeated addition and do six plus six, but I'm gonna do times two. So six times two, then subtract three. Okay, if I was following PEMDAS, is the person gonna do this before this? Yes, because multiplication comes Multiplication and division comes before addition and subtraction. So they're gonna solve this first, even without the parentheses. So this would be an acceptable answer, but this would be maybe a more clear answer if I add the parentheses that I want this to happen first. Okay, let's look at our next one. It says divide by two the sum of six and 12. Okay, so we have two parts. And this time they separated it with a comma for us again. Divide by two the sum of six and 12. So which, what are we doing first here? Well, um, we're gonna first find the sum, of, this is the hardest one to kind of understand what happens first, the sum of six and 12, and then we're gonna divide it by two. So that part should be circled. Okay, and if I do six, plus 12, because sum means addition. So the sum of six and 12, then divide by, oops, not 12, then divide by two. So it should look like that. Okay, now the problem with this problem is, if I leave it like that and someone follows PEMDAS, they're gonna say no parentheses, no exponents, there is multiplication and division, and they're gonna first divide 12 by two. That's not what I want them to do first. I want them to first find the sum of six and 12. So I need to have parentheses this time. I must have parentheses or it's not going to be a correct answer. Okay, let's look at our last one. This time they want us to write a sentence for the following expression. So four times three, and they want us to do that first, and I know because the parentheses, and then take away seven. So we could say, find the product, because product means multiplication, of four and three, then subtract seven. That would be one way I could write that. I could also say multiply four and three, then subtract seven. I could have also maybe said um, subtract seven from the product of four and three. There's quite a few ways we could have worded that. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, please follow your steps and you have quite a few problems to try on your own today. Have a great day.